This is the list of names that um, has changed over the years that Child Protective Services uses. Seems pretty harmless, right? Children, Youth, and Family, Department of Children and Family, Department of Children and Family Services, Department of Social Services, Department of Human Services, Department of Child Safety, Department of Human Resources. Just seems odd. Uh, but it goes back to like a few philanthropists, of course. So um, here's one of them. Yes, Edward T. Devine, economist, child welfare advocate, educator, author, and pioneer social worker. Um, so he was a professor at Columbia University and the American University who advocated for social welfare. In 1896, Devine became General Secretary of the New York City Chapter of the Charity Organization Society, COS. The school expanded from summer to full-time uh, curriculum. It became the New York School of Philanthropy and eventually the Columbia University School of Social Work. Devine served there twice as director. In 1904, outside of the uh, charity organization services, Devine helped found a National Child Labor Committee as well as the National Association for the Study and Prevention of Tuberculosis. He joined an advisory committee of the International Prison Congress in 1912. He became chairman of a committee of social workers who lobbied successfully for the passage of an act that cleared the Federal Commission on Industrial Relations. Furthermore, along with um, him was someone else that helped. There was three of them. So Devine uh, believed to be the first to use the term caseworker in a paper presented after becoming the secretary of the Charity Organization Society in New York. He said good case work involves much thankless labor. So he came up with many of these terms that we see with the, the, the whole children's services. One of Devine's greatest contributions to social work evolved from his experience with charity organization services. As the movement grew, an insufficient number of volunteers made it necessary for COS agency to employ agents, trained staff members who were the predecessors of professional social workers. The usual pattern was that COS volunteers employed the technique of friendly visiting in homes of the poor to establish helping relationships and investigate the circumstances of families in need. COS leaders were typically middle and upper class men and women. They advocated for a more systemic and scientific approach to charity. The casework method later used by the social work profession is rooted in the philosophies and techniques of COS. <laughs> just explain so much. Yeah, why why it's like, you know, let's let's just act like we don't care about kids that need help. Just cuz I I don't the three people that came up with all of this um yeah, I don't I don't So also what developed from this was the child bureau, sort of like the FBI, but for children. So the United States Children's Bureau is a federal agency organized under the United States Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families. Today, the Bureau's operations involve improving child abuse, prevention, foster care, and adoption. Historically, its work was much broader, as shown by the 1912 Act, which created and funded it. Yes, so with Divine, who I had just mentioned, him and this Lillian Wald, I'll show her in a minute, uh, went to uh, the 
the president who was it? Uh, Roosevelt. Is it Roosevelt? I just had it. Yeah, Roosevelt. Um, promoting the idea of a federal bureau that would be concerned with the welfare of children. Divine and this Lillian Wall, who I'll get to in a minute. Um, and she was a founder of the Henry Street Settlement House in New York. Discussed their idea for a Children's Bureau with President Roosevelt in 1906. A bill authorizing such a bureau was introduced and hearings were held. A, night, um, a bill authorizing such a bureau... Or I said... Eight, I'm sorry, I skipped. A, um, 1909 White House Conference on Child Welfare also passed a resolution in favor of such a bureau. However, their goal was only achieved six years after it was first proposed when President William Howard Taft signed the law that brought the U.S. Children's Bureau into being. So it went from this charity organizations of this divine um, and he created all these terms in social work, especially in regards to children and um, and then all of this horror came from it. it. It really did. So this is Lillian Wald, public health progressive. Yeah, she shaped public health. She was a nurse that um, I just mentioned. So a little bit about her. Here I have a picture of her. She was an American nurse, humanitarian, and author. She strove for human rights and started American Community Nursing. She founded the Henry Street Settlement in New York and was an early advocate for nurses in public schools. So, um, I have another picture of her. Wald worked for, the, for a time at the New York Juvenile Asylum, now Children's Village, an orphanage where con conditions were poor. By 1893, she left medical school and started to teach a home uh, class on nursing for poor immigrants in New York. Wald also taught women how to cook and sew, provide recreational activities for families, and was involved in the labor movement. Out of her concern for women's working conditions, she helped to found, to found the Women's Trade Union League. Hmm, yep. And later served as a member of the executive committee of the New York City League. So she's one of those people, you know, let's, I mean, because the public health nurse, 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 I can't talk, nurse, if you go on um, uh, Institute of Medicine, on your YouTube channel, if you can find, just put in TB, you can see in movies on this, how the public health nurse would go in, I've said it many times, oh, you're a new immigrant family, we have to take you to the doctor, oh, get a chest x-ray, oh, you have a shadow on your lung, we need to take you, uh, you feel fine, but you need to pack your bags and come to the TB camp where we're going to train you into all these skills uh, before we let you go back home, but you feel fine. Mm -hmm. Like, really, that's, they're all the traffickers, aren't they, really? I think that's what I'm starting to really think, I given what they all support. And this was the third woman involved. They, all three of them, Divine, Wald, that nurse I just did in her, were all involved in creating all of this with children's rights and regarding labor and uh, sweatshops. Yep, and all just real far radicals. Um, she was a social and political reformer. That was, it's Florence Kelly. Kelly was a member of the Intercollegiate Socialist Society, Society, activist for women's suffrage. And you can see all there, she was a follower of Karl Marx, handling the most vulnerable in our society. Go figure. And let me end with uh, this to, um, if, if people didn't see my video about another divine. This is Dick Divine, yes. He sits on the board and has for a very, very, since its founding, I believe, of Maryville Academy. It was an orphanage, and now it's just has a whole bunch of homes where children aren't being cared for because they all collude with the system.